My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm still downtown Moscow in the ancient district, which is called Kitai Gorod. And these walls were constructed in 1535 to 1538 because the region had to be secured. Very wealthy people lived in this region, so the mother of Ivan the Terrible said, build walls build a fortress to protect that part of the city. So these walls are old. They date back to 1535. They were wide, so wide, that a chariot and a carriage with horses could run along the top. It had muskets and cannons and 14 towers. It was just amazing. And these walls were so successful, outsiders never got on the inside. But if needed, the same walls could keep the in people on the inside trapped so they couldn't get out. A lot of people have strongholds in their minds and in their emotions. They're trapped in lies, trapped in false beliefs about themselves. The devil has imprisoned them and manipulates them. But you know, strongholds can be pulled down. What kind of weapons do you need to have to pull down spiritual strongholds? In 2 Corinthians 10, 4, Paul writes, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are spiritual weapons that can pull down prisons in your mind. If you've been taken captive by a false lie or a lying emotion, you can pull that down and walk free. You don't have to live in a stronghold for the rest of your life. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Thank you for joining me for today's program. Today, we're going to pick up right where we left off in yesterday's program. I'm talking to you about how to pull down a stronghold in your life. You do not have to live dominated by lying emotions or mental strongholds, you can pull them down. You have weapons to do it, and that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. It's going to be great, so stay with me all the way to the end of the program. But I'm offering you my series, which is called Pulling Down Strongholds. It's a five-part series. My friend, you need this. You really need this. If you're dealing with any vain imagination, if you're struggling with your emotions or anything speaking to you, telling you you're not going to make it, you are going to make it. You need to pull that lie down. Don't be dominated by the voice of the devil. That's why you need this five-part series. It will help you. Or maybe you know someone that is struggling. What a gift to give them. It will help them walk into freedom. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats. And it comes with a remarkable study guide. The study guide is just loaded. When you have that and the study guide together, it is just dynamite. It really reinforces what you're hearing or what you're seeing. We're also offering you right now my book, which is called Dress to Kill, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. Today's program is about the weapons that God has given us to blow to pieces those mental strongholds. You need to know what the weapons are, and today we're gonna cover them very quickly, but in this book, there's nearly 500 pages of revelation from the New Testament about the weapons of warfare that God has given to me and God has given to you and God gave them to us so we would use them. You just need to know how. The full title of the book says, you don't have to take it anymore. Are you tired of being submitted to this assault? Are you tired of listening to the devil? You don't have to take it anymore because you are dressed to kill. You can take that lie down. You just need to know how to do it. And this book will help you. And I want to say thank you to those of you that are partners. Wow, you're making a difference in the lives of so many people. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, go into all the world and teach all nations. We have a responsibility to take the teaching of the Bible into all the world. And when you're a partner with this ministry, you're assisting us as we obey the Great Commission. You're doing it with us. Amazing. Right from the privacy of your home, by calling or going online, you can become a partner and immediately help us to take the teaching of the Bible to people all over the world. People just like you that are sitting in front of their television, listening to their device, 
finally thankful that someone is bringing them the verse by verse teaching of the Bible. The Bible's free, but taking it to them is not free. It takes a lot of money to broadcast a TV program. And when you become a partner with our ministry, we want to send you a package of books as our way of saying thank you for becoming a part of our partner family. Together, we're going to do something wonderful in the kingdom of God. It is just awesome that God can use all of us in that way. But today, we're going to talk about our weapons of warfare, weapons to demolish a mental stronghold. So reach for your Bible and let's return to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, where we left off yesterday. The verse says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Today I'm going to talk to you about the weapons, but first I want to repeat what is a stronghold. And I gave you my personal testimony yesterday about a stronghold that tried to get a foothold in my life. Praise God. I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit and it shattered the stronghold. The power of God shatters strongholds. But what is a stronghold? The word stronghold is from the Greek word ukoroma. It describes a fortress, a castle, a citadel, or it pictures a stronghold with walls fortified to keep outsiders on the outside. So if a person has a stronghold, they are insulated by some kind of mental or emotional lie. And it seems that those who could help or those who want to help can't penetrate them because they're so insulated by the walls of this lie. It keeps them on the outside. Or... The word stronghold could describe a dreadful prison constructed deep inside a fortress that was intended to prevent a hostage or prisoner from escaping. So it's a fortress designed to keep people on the outside, and it's a lie or a fortress designed to keep you on the inside. Even though the lie you're hearing is not real, it feels very real to you, and you sit behind imaginary bars thinking that you can't be different, your life will never change. Why can't you be different? Why can't you change? Of course you can, your life is gonna be great. You're just listening to a lie that has enslaved you. Therefore, this word stronghold also carries the idea of a place of arrest, a place of captivity or confinement, a place of detention or imprisonment, or a place of incarceration. Now we have to connect an important verse to this, and that is Acts chapter 10, verse 38, where the Bible tells us, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That word oppressed is very key to this conversation. It is a compound of two Greek words. The word kata carries the idea of domination. The second part of the word dunastasis carries the idea of a wicked tyrant. So when you compound the two words together, this word oppressed in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, pictures a wicked tyrant who rules over his subjects, bullying them with cruelty. It pictures depotism, a dictator, someone that is oppressive or real tyranny. And the verse says, all who were oppressed of the devil, the word devil, the Greek word diabolos, the word dia carries the idea of penetration. The word balos means to strike and to strike repeatedly. When you compound the two words together, the name devil is not just a name. It really is a job description. It describes how the devil operates. Listen to what it means. This name devil means one who repetitiously strikes until successfully penetrating an object to ruin it, affect it, or to take it captive, to slander, accuse, or defame, to penetrate by continuous assault or even to ensnare with a net. It tells us that when the devil begins to strike the mind and the emotions, he doesn't just strike once. He strikes and strikes and strikes and strikes and strikes and strikes. He is attacking that mind, attacking those emotions, trying to attack it from every angle that he might ensnare it, penetrate it, and then ruin it. And yesterday I gave you my testimony, how that from a very young age, I thought there was something defective about me. In fact, it was the devil talking to me that I didn't know it was the devil because we didn't know there really was a devil or that there was spiritual warfare. At least I did not. I'd never heard anybody talk about that. And so the devil had freedom just to assault me. And I did not know that I was under assault. But from a very young age, I thought there was something wrong with me, that I was inferior that I was defective, 
that I was not like others, and I really began to believe that lie. Then I got sick in the seventh grade, missed a lot of school, and when I came back, I didn't understand what anybody was talking about. I began to have an experience that reinforced my belief that something was wrong with me. I felt stupid. I didn't understand what other people were saying. Then finally I came into the ninth grade where I had a teacher who every day called me stupid. Can you imagine that? A teacher, someone with influence, someone who was an authority figure who literally called me stupid every day. She called me stupid runner. All the kids in the ninth grade thought that was funny, so everybody made that my name. And when I walked through the halls of the school, everybody was calling me stupid, 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 stupid. So now the devil's calling me stupid. The devil's telling me I'm defective and inferior. I already feel inferior and defective because I've missed half of a year of school and I don't understand what people are talking about when I come back. Now I have a teacher that's calling me stupid. Now reinforcements come in. All the students are calling me stupid. And then... I took my job placement test in the ninth grade where counselors were going to help all the ninth graders choose their career and their next level of education. And the counselor sat across the table from me and said, Ricky, we don't want to hurt your feelings, but mentally you don't have what is needed for any higher levels of education. You just don't have what is required. So we advise you to learn how to use a shovel or how to pour concrete or how to do some kind of manual labor. These were two authority figures speaking to me. I felt like the world fell out from underneath me. I already felt stupid. Then I had a problem in school because I was sick came back. I didn't understand what people were saying. And this confirmed to me that I was stupid. I have a teacher who called me publicly stupid every day. All the students are calling me stupid. Now I have two guidance counselors who are telling me that I'm intellectually defective, inferior. From every angle, the devil, Diabolos, he was striking me, striking me, striking me, striking me, striking me, trying to penetrate me, ruin me, and take me down. And if I had believed his lies, guess what? He would have gotten a stronghold into my mind and built a well-defended lie in my head. And if I had believed it, my belief in the lie would have empowered it because faith always empowers what you believe. And if I had believed the lie, the lie would have left the mental realm and would enter the real realm. And I would have lived life as a failure as somebody that was defective, I certainly would not be speaking to you today. This was an assault against the call of God on my life. If there's anything that I'm not, friend, I'm not stupid. I'm not intellectually inferior. The devil was after the call of God on my life. The devil doesn't have a lot of foreknowledge, but the devil does know that God wants to do something with you. That's about all that he knows. And he wants to stop it. So he will attack your mind to try to take you down. So you'll never step into God's call. But you do not have to submit to his attack. You do not. You can pull it down. And the Bible tells us we have weapons to deal with it. But first, I want to go very quickly through the seven stages of how the devil assaults the mind to build a stronghold. Phase number one. He personally begins to attack the mind and emotions. I saw this in my life. Phase number two, he brings in reinforcements to support the mental and emotional attack. Phase number three, you begin to have life experiences that reinforce the lie. Number four, influential voices begin to speak the same thing that the devil is saying. Number five, you begin to release your faith or you begin to really believe the lie that's working in your head. You hear it day after day after day after day after day and you begin to think that it's not a lie, that it's really the truth about you. Number six, the lie then begins to transition from the mind into reality. And finally, number seven, the devil takes you hostage. He has built a stronghold in your mind and from that stronghold, like a wicked tyrant, he begins to rule and he begins to dominate your life. But my friend, that does not have to be your story. The devil tried to make it my story, but I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit and we obliterated that stronghold. I'm telling you, friend, Jesus is Lord over all, including your mind and including your emotions. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, God has given you weapons to deal with this. He's given you weapons. 
In fact, in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That word weapons is the Greek word hoplon. The word hoplon describes all the armor, all the weapons that belong to a Roman soldier who is in combat. It is the same word which we find in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. And in Ephesians 6, verse 11, the Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God. That's the Greek word panoplion. The word pan means all, and the same word hoplon, it describes all the weapons belonging to a Roman soldier who is in combat. And it's important that it says panoplion, all the weaponry. God didn't just give you a few pieces. He gave you everything that is needed to deal with the enemy. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What does that word wiles mean? The word wiles is the Greek word methodia, wow from the word meta, which means with, and the word hodas, which is the Greek word for a road. When you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word methodia, which means, or pictures, one who travels on a road or one who operates on a specific avenue. It carries the idea of direction, direction plan, and purpose, which means the devil's not just randomly traveling. He has a route of attack. He has great purpose. He's headed for your head. Why your head? Because your mind is the central control center of your life. Whoever controls your head is going to control you. Whoever controls your thinking will control your emotions. Whoever controls your emotions can begin to manipulate you like a puppet. You become a puppet in their hands. They begin to determine what is your self-image and what you project to others. Whoever controls your head is going to control your life. That is the same reason why God wants your mind. God wants your head. If Jesus is Lord of your mind, your mind's going to be renewed. You're going to think right and you're going to step into the plan of God. But if the devil can seize your mind and build a stronghold in it, he will take you hostage. It's also very important that the Bible says the wiles of the devil, again, the word devil, the Greek word diabolos, one who continuously assaults over and over and over and over. The devil is traveling with purpose. He knows where he's headed. He's headed toward your brain. That's what the word wiles means, the Greek word methodia. He's headed to your mind, straight to your mind. That's what he wants to take captive. And he will, like a devil, try to penetrate it, hitting it again and again and again and again, that he might finally penetrate it and ruin it and build a stronghold. But my friend, he does not have to do that because you have weapons to stop it. And in Ephesians chapter 6, we read about the weaponry. For example, in Ephesians 6 verse 14, we have two pieces of weaponry mentioned. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. We have the loin belt of truth. Or having on the breastplate of righteousness. My friend, you have a breastplate of righteousness to stop an attack. Or listen to verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You have what I call killer shoes. Or how about verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, you have a shield of faith. And the Bible says, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Or listen to verse 17, where two more weapons are mentioned and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And finally, when you come to verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. This is the lance of intercession. When you put all of this together, we have seven pieces of weaponry which have been given to us. And by the way, I discuss all of these in this amazing book called Dress to Kill. You need to order this book today. This book will really equip you for dealing with the enemy. But wait, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it goes on to say, for the weapons of our warfare. Even the word warfare is important. It is a Greek word, strateia, which describes a well-planned attack. It is derived from a Greek word which depicts strategic warfare. It includes the methods to be used in the attack and the route chosen to carry out a debilitating assault, which means not only has God given you weapons, God will give you a divine strategy. If you will listen, the Holy Spirit will give you the route for a debilitating assault to take down those lies that are trying to dominate you. And it says that our weapons are not carnal. The word carnal 
The Greek word sarkikos, which means it's not fleshly. They're not natural. They're not derived from the fleshly, the natural world, but they are mighty. The word mighty is a translation of the Greek word dunamis. The word dunamis pictures explosive power, superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal, extraordinary, and unparalleled results. It is the very Greek word which depicted the full might and power of an advancing army, which means when this power is released in you, you are no longer the victim. You're no longer the one oppressed. You become the aggressor. You can charge. You can advance. When the weapons of God are working in you, along with the divine strategy, you have dunamis. You have the power of an advancing army to do what? Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down as we saw in the last program, is a Greek word which means to take down, to disassemble, if needed, bit by bit, piece by piece, to demolish, to destroy, to dismantle. Oh, I love that. To throw down, knock down, break up, pull apart, take to pieces till nothing is left standing. And it is used to picture the pulling down the walls of a well-defended fortress. And that's why Paul goes on to say to the pulling down of strongholds, strongholds. What kind of lie has dominated you? What kind of lie has incarcerated you? It's imaginary. It's not even real. It's just what the devil's been saying to you. What God says about you is the truth. If you're listening to anything else, you're just sitting behind imaginary bars, the devil trying to put you in a place of confinement so you'll never break out and be all that God wants you to be. And that is why the verse goes on to say, in the next verse, casting down imaginations. My friends, these are simply imaginations. These imaginations, vain imaginations, are trying to incarcerate you. But you have the weapons of God. The Holy Spirit will give you a divine strategy, which is not fleshly. It may be very different from anything you've ever heard before, but the Holy Spirit knows how to attack, and he will give you the root for a debilitating assault to pull down, dismantle, disassemble those lies that have been trying to dominate and rule your life. You can unseat the tyrant that has been trying to oppress you your whole life, and you can walk free. And this is where we're going to pick up tomorrow, but I'm out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Do you know anyone with a bad self-image or negative thinking that affects the way they see themselves or how they perform around others? Many people are hostages to lying imaginations that keep them from being all they were meant to be. If you are harassed by inward thoughts and your life feels limited because of voices that speak to you, then pulling down strongholds will help you walk free and become the person you dream to be. To defeat the enemy's lies and step into the life God wants you to have, you need to know what is a stronghold. What are signs that a person has a stronghold in his or her life? What weapons pull down a stronghold and remove it forever? Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10, Pulling Down Strongholds will show you how to cast down the lying imaginations that have controlled your life for too long. In addition to this teaching series, right now you can also purchase the book Dress to Kill. This comprehensive study teaches you how to put on the full armor of God, and in it you'll learn the significance of your God-given spiritual weaponry and how to be prepared every day to defeat the enemy. This beautifully bound 500-page book is the definitive Bible study available on spiritual warfare. This powerful book can be yours for just $22. Order today to discover how to have victory in life's battles by renewing your mind and finding your identity in Christ. Don't miss this special offer, Pulling Down Strongholds and Dress to Kill. Call now, 1-800-742-5593 or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for being a partner with our ministry. It's because of your financial support that we're able to open churches all over our city. Moscow is a beautiful city and one of the oldest cities in Russia. It is very dynamic and is a very large city that is developing all the time. There are many churches in Moscow, but ours is one of the biggest Protestant churches in the city and was opened in the year 2000. And it is called the Moscow Good News Church. But more recently, we opened a new church location in the southwest region of Moscow. Because of this new location, 
our Moscow Goodness Church can serve people who live on the other side of our city. People there need salvation, healing, restoration, and a place they can call their spiritual home. And the Lord has called us to take the gospel to them. Our partners helped us lay the foundation of the Moscow Good News Church and have helped us open multiple churches in Moscow. But we've been working quite some time to open this new location, and now it's done. We thank God for His help and rejoice at everything the Lord has done and is doing in our lives. Because of the support of our generous partners, we are able to open these new locations in our great city. We all have a part to play, and right now, right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner in this work and supporting our work financially. We invite you to become a partner with us to establish believers in the Word of God and take the gospel all over our city. Please call us or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. Today, as I've been teaching, I've really sensed the anointing of God. And if you feel that you're ready to deal with that stronghold that has been dominating your life, pick up your phone and call us right now or send us an email. We want to pray with you. We want to believe for that lie to be shattered and for you to walk free of the devil's domination in your mind and in your emotions. It is a lie, my friend. And Jesus Christ is calling you to step out from behind those imaginary bars into freedom. Jesus has freedom waiting for you. And when you step out from behind those bars, everything in your life is going to change. Call us right now or send us an email and we're going to pray for you. And remember that I'm offering you my series called Pulling Down Strongholds, Five Parts. It's based on these programs. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it to reinforce yourself with this teaching. It comes with a great study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book called Dress to Kill, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor. This book will really undergird everything that you're hearing in these programs. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You did not call us as Christians to live in slavery, to emotional lies, or to dominating thoughts. You've called us to step free. And Father, we pray that today those imaginary bars would be shattered. And I speak freedom to my friend. I say, come forth in Jesus' name. Come out from behind that lie and step into the life that Jesus has planned for you. I speak it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer, call us right now or send us an email. And remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. It is true. Let God's word work in you today. And I'll see you in the next program. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity.